In this video, we're going to introduce a very important type of linear model referred to as simple interest. And to familiarize you with some of the vocabulary associated here, think of the following situation. Suppose a loan is given out uh, to a daughter who's fallen on hard times by her parents, right? Uh, you know, parents want to kind of help her out here. Uh, the, the parents, they, they, they want to give their kid the money, but they don't just want to give it as a gift. They want her to learn a little bit more responsibility. And therefore, they're going to give her a loan. It'll be a simple interest loan for which there is interest collected, but it's not as you know, necessarily malicious as maybe it would be from a, a bank or something like that. It's a very generous loan here. And so simple interest is based upon the, the, the following idea. So first of all, she's going to borrow a certain amount of money. Right, and this is called the principal. This is how much for the for the borrower. This is how much money you take away, and for the lender, this is how much money you're giving. Now, the the idea of a loan is that this principal will be paid back to the lender from the borrower, but it will be paid back with some extra interest. So, some percentage of the original principal will be added back to it. And so, let's say that the interest rate is going to be R percent in this situation, and this is going to be R percent per some unit of time. Uh, most most financial loans are done in a year time frame, but if it's a short term loan, it could be a matter of months or weeks. But so yeah, typically this would be like uh, uh, your percentage per year. So you talk about like your APR, your annual percentage rate. It's it talking about a, an interest rate per year. So after an agreed upon time frame, the daughter must repay her parents the original principal plus interest on the principal that occurs while she's in possession of the loan. So if she repays the loan back after T units of time, she will have to pay back her parents the following thing. So you get this formula right here. So the amount that she has to pay back her parents uh, is gonna be P, the principal times one plus RT, uh, which with this simple interest loan, there's not any reoccurring payment. It's just gonna be a lump sum. Let's say that she borrows $6,000 from her parents, then let's say like six months later, three years later, 10 years later, she gives back all the cash to her to her parents. She'll give back the original principal and the interest all at once. Where this formula comes from is the following. If you distribute this, you're gonna get P times one, which is just uh, one, right? She pays back the original principal plus P times R times T. So what PRT here represents is P times R is, the, is a percentage of the principal. If she has to pay back 10% of her $6,000 loan, she's going to be paying $600, but $600 per unit of time, right? So $600 per year, maybe 10% per year. So every year he takes to pay back, she has to pay another $600 back. And so when you factor out the P, you, you get the typical simple interest formula, the amount equals P times one plus RT. Now, when you distribute it out again, right? Uh, going back to the distributed amount, you're going to get a, a P times R, times T plus P. In which case, what you see going on here is that this is actually a linear function, where with the linear function, your variable is time. How long does it take for you to pay back the loan? Your y-intercept is the original principal. If you borrowed the money and then paid it back immediately, no time elapsed, then you would pay no interest and you would pay just back the principal. That's the y-intercept. And then the slope here is gonna be the interest rate applied to the principal, right? P times R, how many, how many dollars per year do you have to pay back for the loan? And so simple interest is a linear model, even though it's generally written uh, in this factored form. So suppose the daughter borrows $6,000 and she agrees to pay 6% annual percentage rate APR on the loan, and she pays back her parents after three years. How much money does she owe her parents? Well, in that situation, using the simple interest formula from above, the amount will equal the principal, which is 6,000, times one plus the interest rate, which is 0 0.06. Make sure you write your R actually as a percentage, uh, like as a decimal, not with the percentage symbol. And then she pays it back after three years. Uh, this percentage rate is percentage per year. And so since this is year, there's no conversion of time we have to worry about. This is the calculation we do. So we're going to first do 6% uh, times 3. That's actually going to have the effect of 18%. So taking three years to pay back 6% per year is the same thing as having an 8% interest rate after one year. You add that together. So you get 1.18 here and then multiply that by 6,000. Uh, that gives us uh, 7,080. And so that's how much uh, the daughter would have to pay back 
her parents after three years. Be aware that if you subtract six thousand from that, that means she's paying one thousand one thousand eighty dollars in interest. That's the cost of the loan. Which of course this is just gonna be this is just gonna be PRT. Uh, which oftentimes when people use the interest, talk about simple interest, they sometimes write it this way, that interest is equal to PRT. That just gives you the interest. You have to add the interest to the principal to tell you how much the, you'll pay back at the end. That's an important thing. Uh, but the interest itself is this is how much it would cost her for the loan. Um, let's switch up the situation again. Let's suppose that the daughter borrows 6000 and she has an APR of 6%. But let's say that she pays back her parents after a time frame of five months or something like that, right? Let's let's say she pays it back after five months. Now, when you are working with months, right, you'll see that the month, there's a mismatch between months and percentage rate because the APR is an annual percentage rate. It's 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 per year, right? This is this is percent per year, but we're measuring time in months. So we have to convert from one from the other. We could switch five months into years, in which case it would be five twelfths of a year. That's perfectly acceptable. But we also we could switch percentage per year. We could also switch this to percentage per month by taking percentage per 12 months. Like so. So basically, we have to either take the, the time frame and divide it by 12 so that it becomes years, or we have to take the, per, the APR and divide it by 12 to make it a, a monthly percentage rate as opposed to an annual percentage rate. For simple interest, it doesn't make really much of a difference which direction you go here. The amount that she's going to have to pay back is 6,000 times the principal. Then you're going to get 1 plus, uh, we're going to get R, right, is the next number. I'm going to leave, I'm going to write the percentage rate as percentage per month. So we're going to get 0 0.06 divided by 12. So that gives you the monthly percentage rate. And then we times that by five months, like so. And so now we just have to multiply these things together. Uh, let's see. So when we do that, 0 0.06 divided by 12, uh, this is going to give us, let me write it out here. This is going to give you 0 0.005. You times that by five. We then get one plus, you're gonna get point zero zero two five. That was a zero right there, I promise. Add that to the one, you get one point zero two five, and then times that by six thousand, that would end up with six thousand one hundred and fifty. That's how much money she'd have to pay back if she paid her parents back after five months. And so if you focus just on the interest part, right? The interest is just gonna be $150. So it's a dramatically smaller interest that she has to pay, not because the interest rate changed, not because the principal changed, but because she paid it back faster, then it's less interest overall. So it only costs her $150 to borrow it for five months as opposed to borrowing for three years. So if anything, you get out of, uh, out of a lesson like this is, if ever you borrow money, the key to financial success is to pay back your loan quickly. The longer you take, the worse it'll be for you. And that might mean making sacrifices. If you graduate from school and you have some student debt, the key I want you to know here is pay off your debt as fast as you can. That might mean you can't buy the Xbox 17 uh, that just came out for another year or two. Show a little bit of self-discipline and pay off your debt because you'll have actually more money in the future if you do that than delaying uh, the debt you're paying off right now.